Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs, the channel that gives you one match day vlog weekly and of course other features including preview shows of games over the weekend, the League of Ireland and review shows of games um, in the League of Ireland, plus internationals, talking point videos, all kinds of stuff, like League of Ireland, best 11s etc up there. Anyway, straight into the review show, uh, the weekend's games in the Premier Division first, then I'll go into the First Division. So, Bohemians at Dalyman Park beat Shelburne 2-0 at Dalyman Park. In the prediction uh, show, I went for 2-1 Bohemians, so I got the result right there. Uh, nil nil at half-time. A poor game by all accounts. One thing that I will say, though, is that um, the pitches are a bit bobbly at the moment, and some of them are a bit cut up at the moment, but... It's going to take a couple of weeks because, um, you know, the weather has been horrendous the last while. It's going to get a few weeks for the pitch to get into the condition that clubs will want them to get into. I think that plays a lot into it as well. But nil-nil at half-time. I said Shelburne and the preview prediction show would be dogged, and they were. But um, in the second half, Bowes got two goals. Andre Wright opened the scoring after a good work from Twardick to set him up. Twardick then set up Danny Mandrew for the second goal. He started the season very well as well. And Twardick was given man of the match. He started the season very well with Bowles, getting player of the month, and now two assists against Shelburne. So great start for him and Bowles as well. For Bowles coming into this game, interesting that they went for right ahead of McCauley. McCauley had a couple of games and um, obviously didn't perform and long went with right. Danny Grant was back for Bowles, so he was on the left-hand side of midfield. Um, and I think him and Twardick are the way to go on, on both wings. Um... You know, Shelburne had Kieran Kilduff back for this game. Dobbs did keep his place, but played wide. Um, they were missing Jace Kabia, who did pick up an injury against Pat, so he's a loss to them. Um, all in all, I think Bohemians did enough to deserve to win the game. Shelburne were, were dogged as usual and will be all season, I think. <coughs> it's a case of if they pick up a few injuries, have they got the squad? Only time can tell there, but um, all in all, they'd be quite satisfied with their start. Bulls delighted to get the win after losing away to Derry, which puts them on nine points. Three wins, two draws and five games, and they're currently third in the league. So, um, a decent enough start for Bulls, and um, great news that Danny Grant is back for them. As I said, Mandrew started the season very, very well. His goal was a good goal, but I'm not convinced he was going for it. I know it's, it's, it's Mandrew and he, he tries things, but uh, I think he might have been trying to find whoever's on the far post, actually, but... You know, it doesn't really matter. Bohemians won the game 2-0. Shelburne, for their part, as I said, <coughs> still a decent start for them to have two wins in, in, in five. They will, will be satisfied with that, and they'll move on next week. Playing in Dublin, St. Patrick's Athletic Beach, Cork City, 1-0 at Richmond Park. Um, I predicted 1-0 for Pats as well. Uh, I knew this would be a tight game. Both teams are struggling for goals, and... Uh, I think there would have been an element of nerves in this because uh, particularly from Pat's point of view, they would have felt like they needed to get the three points here. Pat's had most of the game as they tend to do possession-wise, but particularly in the first half, Pat's didn't create many opportunities. Um, I think Chris Forrester had a free kick brilliantly saved by McNulty, but that was about it. Um, second half, Billy King, who there's been question marks over a few Pats' signings actually so far, and rightfully so. It is early in the season, though. But Billy King, for me, has looked sharp. And he's another player, actually, who got a club player of the month, who actually um, performed this weekend, obviously getting the winner. Uh, lovely ball by Desmond over the top. King took it down with one touch and um, kind of a lob curl shot past McMulty into the far corner. Um, but Pats, at times, I still think they probably play the possession game too much they can't keep the ball there's no doubt about that but sometimes they can keep the ball for 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 the sake of keeping the ball and obviously the goal came from a long pass from lee desmond over the top to king who he got in behind just about beating the offside trap uh cork will be pleased enough relatively with the performance after in their last two games particularly after a few weeks of some heavy defeats 
Uh, they did have two good chances in this game, and, and despite Pats dominating the ball, um, in fact, they almost equalised immediately after Pat scored through Keane Coleman, former St. Patrick's Athletic player. So, um, look, they're still finding their feet. They have a very young squad, as I keep saying as well. But for Pats, funnily enough, they're fourth at this minute in time, but um, it is not much between fourth and like eighth or ninth, you know. Uh, two wins, two draws. Uh, uh, two wins, two defeats, rather. Um, they probably... I don't think they've kept the same 11 as well for four games, so it's real. It's very difficult to pick, sit down and say, this is Pat's best 11. There's a number of players who you'd have in there. Um, Benson is still missing as well, but um, there's talk he might be available next week. Um, Chris Forrester was apparently the best player in the park in this game as well, and he tried to run the show uh, in midfield, and he was getting tackles in. He captained the side as well. Uh, Ian Birmingham was actually dropped in favour of Griffin at, at left back. So there's a lot of changes to Pats, and they're changing their team an awful lot. Like Ollie Younger came back into defence, Feely was suspended, you know, uh, McClelland played, Ronan Hale didn't play. Um, question mark for me and many Pats fans is Martin Rennie up top. To me, he looks like a player who's capable of holding the ball up and bringing others into the game. He's no pace to get in behind. He obviously hasn't scored yet. But uh, I don't know if it's a case of trying to figure out that with Rennie, with Pats, and try and get players more in and around them, perhaps. Um, his performances overall probably haven't been good enough, to be honest, so far. They could go with Rowan and Hale. The issue with Rowan and Hale is he's... Uh, He's a striker, but he's not what you call an all-and-out striker, so uh, he can get in behind the fences. I'd like to see him on the wing, personally, instead of McClelland, you know. But, um, look, it's a good win for Pats. Badly needed with Dundalk at Oriel Park next week. Cork City, as I said, after a very ropey start. I know they lost this game, but in the last couple of games, they've settled a little bit by beating Finn Harps, and, you know, they could have nicked the points quite easily in this one as well if Keane Coleman had got that goal. Um, and they had another chance through a header as well. And generally, they kept it tight throughout the game as well, which is a big improvement in their last two games um, from the other games they played against. Um, that said, they could say they've weathered the storm. They have played Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk, so they feel like they can pick up points in other games coming up. But um, yeah, 1-0 into court, St. Pats. Now, the RSC and Waterford. Waterford picked up a much-needed three points at home to Derry City. I'm worried about them... Earlier in the week when I was in the preview prediction show, I did go for Derry to win. I actually can't remember what score I went for. I might have went for 1-0 to Derry, but certainly went for them to win the game. Um, it finished Warford FC 2, Derry City 1. Stephen Mallon, the impressive Stephen Mallon, gave Derry the lead the first half. But um, a massive goal by Sam Bone in every way after 44 minutes gave Waterford a leveller going in at half time. It was a fantastic strike from outside the box from the defender to give them the uh, equaliser. Um, but if they thought that was drama, in the 95th minute, Shane Griffin scored an even better goal uh, than Sam Bone when he um, he took a shot from outside the area. Further out, it was easy 35 yards out, curled it into the top corner. Fantastic goal, 95th minute as well. Scenes at, at the RSC. Massive, massive win for Waterford because they played two home games in a row where they were beaten comfortably in home to Bowes and Shamrock Rovers. And Derry City were buoyant after a win at Bo home to Bohemians last weekend and are a good side. So this was a massive three. A point would have been a decent result for Waterford, but to get it and to get it in the manner they did is a massive three points and a massive boost. And it does put them on six points after four games as well. And they'll be quite satisfied with that considering they've played... All of the uh, a lot an awful lot of, uh, of top teams. They haven't played Rovers, they haven't played Dundalk yet, I know, but they've played teams that finished above them last season. So to get six points from four playing teams that finished above you this the season before, I suppose is pretty decent. So massive, massive win for them. And interesting game actually next week that obviously you'll be looking at in the prediction preview show when they travel to Talk Park to take on Shelburne. But um for now, a massive three points for them. Derry disappointing for them it has to be said um start for them i mean if you think about it they've obviously lost this game they drew with finn harps in which they were very lucky to do so scoring the last minute the game called off against pats they lost at dundalk 1-0 that can happen of course but at the same time it's no points and um their only win was against bohemian so it's um 
Yeah, it's a disappointing start ultimately for Derry. Um, they'll be hoping to do much better because they've a lot of good players. Um, again, the balance, similar to Pats maybe, I think it's difficult to know the right balance and the right structure in the team for Derry City. So, um, look, whoever plays them next week, I believe it's Sligo at the Brandywell. You know, they're going to be up for this Derry City. So, finish Derry City... It's finished Warford FC 2, Derry City 1 at the RC. Friday night, Sligo Rovers host the Shamrock Rovers at the showgrounds in what was the last game of the weekend in the Premier Division. This was live in Air Sport. I watched it in Air Sport. Uh, Sligo 2, Shamrock Rovers 3. Um, I predicted Rovers would win this one, all right, on the prediction preview show um, by a couple of goals to nil. But... Um, yeah, I know it sounds cl- I don't want to be too harsh on Sligo Rovers, but they've had a difficult start. They've had no points after four games. The positives are they battled in this game. They got two goals. They suffered another injury as well in this game as well. And they have injury problems. Um, but at the same time, they'll want to be picking up points soon. They go to Derry next. Even though I finished 3-2 to Rovers, I did think Rovers were fairly, Shamrock Rovers were fairly comfortable in this match, if I'm honest with you. They obviously went ahead. To Jack Byrne, he got too much space in the box, nice finish. There probably should have been two up on Ferruja, um, who's, who's a very good young player, should have, should have scored. Um, I did think Sligo's penalty was very fortunate. They were saying on Air Sport that Lopez didn't get the ball. Uh, true, but not getting the ball doesn't make it a penalty. He didn't get the man either. He didn't actually foul the man, he just stood his ground. So I'm not sure how you can give a penalty for that, to be honest with you. But it was a penalty and Coughlin took it with a plum. And it's the only thing that Sligo really offered in the first half. Yet it was one all. And it was one all with 15 minutes to go, actually. Um, you know, so it was a strange one. I mean, Rovers played very well in patches, but seemed to be too comfortable at times and could have got caught out because of that. Um, Dylan Watts came on. This is what Rovers can do and Dundalk particularly can do from the bench. And I thought he made an impression. A lovely ball from Liam Scales into Watts, who laid off a, a nice pass who, to McIniff, who was already on the move, and McIniff finished, as you would expect him to finish. Um, so that left Rovers 2-1 up, and Aaron Green then made it 3-1. Um, Sligo Rovers then scored in the last minute. A very good finish from Niall Morhan, who, who I was very impressed with, actually. I thought he was excellent. I thought he played right back. He usually plays midfield, but this season has been really good. Um... Lovely one too, and a curl and finish into the left hand corner, but it was too little, too late. But in terms of doing well, I thought he done well on Ferruja. Ferruja should have scored in the first half, but that can happen with a player Ferruja's quality. But um, in terms of getting into those positions, but all in all, I thought Morhan done a terrific job in Ferruja, and Ferruja was actually taken off eventually. So um, it's certainly a positive for Sligo. Cawley, I thought in midfield was very good for them as well. Coughlin ran his socks off as usual. Um, look, the effort is there and they'll be hoping to get points very quickly because the longer you go without getting any points or a win, the bigger the struggle because um, other teams are going to be picking up points as well. Uh, Rovers will be delighted. It's another win. It's five wins in the bounce for them. You know, that's 15 points on the board early on. Um, they play well in patches in this one. I thought a player who's impressed me actually since he's gone to Rovers, he deserves a mention, is Liam Scales. I thought he was very good. Um I remember seeing a thing earlier on in the summer where statistically he was the worst defender in the Premier Division last season. But I saw UCD play the other day. Check out that match they vlog, by the way, against Drogheda United. And they lost 5-1. You could have John, prime John Terry centre-back there for UCD and his stats wouldn't look good because one player can't keep a defence together. And if you've got a midfield who are completely overrun, there's not an awful lot one def- player can do in a defence he's very good on the ball I've seen him play for the Irish under 21s as well excellent player really good sign for Rovers very good on the ball and then he's playing with better players so you're not going to be exposed to the extremes as he was last season so uh, Liam Scales very good for Rovers so far this season for what I've seen uh, all in all yeah that's it really Sligo 2 Shamrock Rovers 3 and we'll move on now Finn Park Dundalk the champions hit back after losing Rovers last week with a uh, Impressive 4-0 win against the host, Finn Harps. Finn Harps have started the season quite well. And I talked about how they were tight at the back, but they were demolished in this game. Two goals from Patrick Huben, Michael Duffy, and impressive new signing Craig Sloggett um, to give the champions a 4-0 win and boost them to 12 points. 
three points off leaders, Shamrock Rovers. The one interesting tale that's coming across for Dundalk in the opening five games for me is Patrick Hoobin. He's got five goals in five games. Last season, he got 13, 14 goals, um, which isn't bad, by the way, but nowhere near as good as he can as he can do. He's easily a 20-goal striker in this league, and five goals, five games so far is a magnificent start for him, and it bodes well for the season, to be honest. Um, Finn Harps, after a decent start, suddenly find themselves with two win, two defeats in the bounce. And no Barry McNamee tonight. Um, tonight? Friday night. <laughs> um, so that was a loss for them. But let's be honest, I don't think he would have made a difference in, in this match because they were well beaten. Overall, they'll still be pretty pleased with the start they've made. The draw up in Derry, that said, they should have got the three points. Um, the win against Sligo, for example. So um, all in all, they'll be relatively pleased with their start. But, um, you know, they won't want to get into a run of games or to start losing. I know they've got Shamrock Rovers away next week. And I think they've pats away possibly the week after. But um, it's, um, you know, suddenly you could find yourself losing a few few games. That said, you know, you're playing Dundalk. You're playing the champions. Like, I wouldn't be too concerned if I was them. Dundalk and Ro Shamrock Rovers can hammer any team on their day let's be honest as well so um yeah it's a great start interesting for Dundalk Jordan Flores and this is what they can do as well I spoke briefly about Rovers earlier on bringing on Dylan Watson making a difference and um, Jordan Flores was on the bench he's been very good in his last few games uh didn't even come on in this game Daniel Kelly had started the game they can do that Cammy Smith played they bring on Patrick McElhenney McElhenney even um so uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, they've key players. They obviously have key players. You know, the likes of Duffy. If Duffy and Huben were injured, you would be in trouble. You can have a squad, but let's be honest. But they can mix it up. They can bring in Leahy for Massey if they need to. Massey played, obviously. They can rotate those central defenders. They've got Hoare, Cleary, you know, etc., etc. Um, you know, Gartland. And um, they can just, you know, they can, they can mix it up. Andy Boyle as well, so... You know, we all know that. But, um, yeah, good start overall for Dundalk, I think, because they did contribute to a very good game against Rovers where they just came up short. So they'd be happy enough with their start last season and a poor start. Finn Harps just has to be careful, in my view, in the next few weeks. So that's it, guys, for the Premier Division roundup. We'll go into the First Division now. Start off with the team, team that's the only team that has a 100% record in the First Division this season thus far, and that's Cabin Teeley FC. And arguably, this is their greatest win of the season so far. They scored four against Bray, they scored three against Atlone, they only scored one here, but they grounded this one out big time against Shamrock Rovers B. Um, I did tip them to win it as well, I went for 2-1, they won it 1-0, but after 60 minutes, Daniel Blackburn was sent off for Cabin Teeley. so to score in the final minute, Bar Barnes to score for them in the final minute, you know, playing 30 minutes with 10 men and to have the, obviously the fitness levels to do so as well is very impressive. Um, Shane Barnes that top scorer in the league with three goals um, after three games he only got one last season I believe for Cabin Teeley as well so excellent start for them and this result will actually feel better than the last couple of games you know uh, Rovers seem to mix things up I'm just looking at their team very quickly there they seem to um, mix things up again and their team on paper certainly doesn't look as strong as it was in the last few weeks no Dean Williams they've no um can't remember the central defender's name but um it's, it's a long name it's a tough one to pronounce Rovers fans will probably know it. he's not he wasn't playing and Brandon Kavanagh also wasn't playing so interesting stuff there I'm not sure if their injuries are brought up to the first team squad or what but um that's the other issue at Rovers this season as well. The B team is that maybe there'll be a lot of changes week to week, you know. But Cam and Teeley be delighted with that start. Nine points, three games. Pat Devlin waving his magic wand as he often does. And uh, who's to say they mightn't be in the reckoning this season early days. The prediction show predicted it would be a draw between Cove Rammers and Atlow. And both teams had no points coming into the game. And I felt both teams would feel that they can get something out of this. Now, it proves to be a bit of a humdinger, finishing Cove 3 at Lone Town 2. Cove took the lead on 21 through Brian Murphy. And um, David Hurley gave them a 2-0 lead inside 30 minutes. But um, 
two penalties on 30 minutes and 44 minutes from Darren Mean and the experienced Darren Mean and put at loan level at halftime 2 2. He also missed a penalty, funnily enough, in the first game against Cabin Teeley. So, a few penalties for them. Again, what well, looked like a turning point, Dylan Walsh was sent off in 68 for Cove, and you're probably thinking at this stage that Atlone are at least going to get a draw. But Ian Turner uh, got the winner after 82 minutes, and great win for Cove. Very disappointing defeat in the end to Atlone. They wouldn't have been too despondent losing to Cabin Teeley, but um, getting back from 2 0 down to get back to 2 2. To seeing the opposition getting a man sent off and ultimately losing the game 3-2 is devastating. For Cove, it's fantastic and it shows real character in their side because everything was going against them. Two up to 2-2, two, two, man down. You're probably thinking, let's hang on. Can we hang on for a point here? But no, they go and get all three. So a great win, similar to the Cabin Tilly Rovers one for Cove and they're off the mark. They were unlucky to lose at UCD last time out, Cove. So... They'd be delighted to get three points. At loan, no points, but only two games. They do have a game in hand with every team in the league, themselves and Galway. So, uh, but they'd be disappointed with this one. Uh, Cove three, at loan two. Fair Carrick Park have finished Wexford nil, Galway United nil. And not an awful lot I can say about this. Um, but again, there was a sending off. The experience and uh, Galway captain Shane Duggan sent off with five minutes to go. Um, it's tough to rate Galway at, this big, at the start of the season because they did have that game postponed um, they played Rovers B in horrendous conditions and drew and they got to Wexford and draw but I, did, I have spoken about Wexford before and I've said how they're going to be more competitive this season and that's proved to be the case in the opening couple of games where they have two points at home so that's two draws against UCD and Galway and beating at Bray 2-0, but um, Bray getting the second goal in the last minute. So Wexford definitely are going to be more competitive this season. Galway, in one way you look at it and you say two games on the road, unbeaten. Um, it's like they're not into the season yet or something, you get the feeling. Um, there was the problem with players cutting trains. Some of them had a hypothermia after last weekend. I, I shouldn't laugh, but uh, just it's kind of... An, a laugh of irony really like it's just the whole situation is ridiculous i thought but anyway um so yeah look they need a, they almost need a game at home don't they and to try and get the three points there and that'll come next so um you know their game against that loan of course is cancelled as well and you probably favor that they would have won that at home as well so they just need to get into the season wex would be very pleased with their start and performances though as well the and they're not too far away from a win either, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Two draws at home and an arrow enough to feed away from home. So Wexford nil, Galway nil. I had tipped Galway to win this one narrowly. Another game I tipped a team to win narrowly was Drotada to beat UCD. But they beat them all right. But it wasn't narrow. Finished Drotada United 5, UCD 1 at United Park. And this was a bit of a mad game. I was at, I vlogged the game. Um, please check that out, actually. Um on the channel but um yeah i'm just distracted by a minute because there's a an actual robin in the garden i didn't think it was the time of year for robins but anyway uh so draw the five ucd one and this was very impressive from draw the, but very poor from ucd i might have I have to say as well it was very poor from ucd as well um they can see an awful lot of goals last season the premier division the first decent team they came up against this season and they were torn to shreds, I have to say. And it could have been more. Honestly, it could have been easily 8-1, you know. Um, only for a few goalkeeper saves, crossbar, um, a few final passes that might have went astray from Drotta. But Drotta, the game was over after 17 minutes. They were 3 it up. Mark Doyle gave them the lead early on. Uh, Adeyemo, who was very good on the right wing. But he also he kind of was on the right wing, cutting centrally for a lot of the game. Um, Henri-ish I suppose except from the right um, and Chris Lyons was, was his usual self as well and he made a 3-0 um, Jack Touche made a 4-0 I thought he was very good as well most of the players were very good it's hard to pick them out uh, to be honest because they just I think I said it in the uh, vlog at the end that they they cut through UCD's offence like a hot knife through butter they really did they just it was too easy uh, centrally as well to be cutting through a central midfield position in waves and at, at ease almost like a rugby team 
um, the way Jota did. It's not good enough from UCD's point of view. You can argue the fact that UCD improved in the second half, but it's often the case when a team is 4-0 up at half time, two things happen. The other team come out and forget about the game. So there's a bit more pride there and they're trying to win the second half, really. And the opposition, Jota in this case, um, you know, the levels go down a little bit. And for the first 20, 25 minutes in particular, the levels did go down for Drotted in the second half, as you'd expect in a game like that. And UCD did play a bit in that time and did score a goal through Kerrigan, which was a brilliant goal, probably the goal of the game, actually. He picked it up in his own half and uh, uh, dribbled past a couple of players and slotted it home expertly into the far left corner. So, um, yeah, after that, though, Drotted did come up to it again. And to be honest... As I said, they hit the bar. There was a few saves. They got a penalty. Sean Brennan came on as a sub and he dispatched that penalty. Um, but there was another one where Conor Kane, I think, now this Conor Kane had a very good game and he's a very good left back. Um, but this shouldn't happen. He picked it up, I think, on the edge of his own area. And he literally ran straight. He didn't do anything special. He's quick, but he's not the quickest either. And he just ran straight uh, from that position down the left until he got to the point where he was near enough the UCD box from the left-hand side and got a cross in and Lyons just didn't quite anticipate it. It was a good cross and that could have been five, but it was just, it just highlight the ease that, you know, they ran at UCD at times. It was ridiculous. And I don't know, UCD, they need to be more organized than that, to be honest with you. Otherwise, they're not going to contend at all. They'd be very disappointed with that. And it's just it, it was poor. I just thought it was very, very poor. Um tried to cut a few more goals, as I said. Lines hit the bar where he kind of it came across him and he hit it on the volley and just couldn't keep it down. But he kind of had to hit it first time, so it was a difficult one. Uh, it wasn't easy. Adiemo caused problems as well, where he cut in and got inside a few times and uh could have scored as well. So uh Farrell was very industrious in midfield, very good. And you can see, you can see, see why, no disrespect to Sean Brennan, but you can see why he's not playing at the moment. Sean Brennan is a bit of a Mr. Drotter. He commands a sub. He can control the game, there's no doubt about that. But the way Drotter are trying to play, a lot of it's high intensity pressure and effort in midfield. And Brennan probably wouldn't be that style, whereas Farrell would be that style of player. Um, but it shows when you see some of the players Drotter had on the bench. Um, it shows the strength and depth they have for this division and that'll, that'll stand them in good stead for the rest of the season so catch out the vlog very good game in terms of getting goals drop out of 5 UCD 1 um, the other game Longford and Bray was postponed unfortunately due to the weather hopefully we're over that now I did say that last week so it was disappointing that that game didn't go ahead but that's about it this week for the review show guys um, subscribe to the channel if you're new uh, there's plenty of other videos up there like League of Ireland Best 11s, previews, plenty of match day vlogs going back since September, October or something. Just browse through them and, and have a look and see what you think. Um, and that's about it. I'll have a preview prediction show as usual coming up during the week as well. So take it easy, guys, and have a good week. Good luck.